Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 499, not 500, Tony. This show is brought to you by Primary Arms, VZ Grips, and Walker Defense. In this show, we have a 3X Prism review. We talk about uppers, bros, and wolverines. As you may know, we still showcase guns, gear, and anything else you might be interested in. We still try our best to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective, but we are human. So, tonight, we have Tony, Rob, and me, Chad. Rusty is hunting bears, and he was a little off, and he shot a boar instead or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think well, he, he was trying to... Th- I, I, well, I saw his geolocation. He's at Yellowstone Park. <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to go some picnic baskets. Uh, going to put it into the rash of picnic no, Jellystone basket Park. baskets. Jellystone Park. <laughs> Jellystone Park, Park yeah. that's right. Yeah, stealing them picnic baskets. Yeah, so he's not here. So, that means Tony... T Rusty has to do the first ad. Woohoo! Hold, hold down. Here we go. <coughs> <clears throat> me, 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 me. What, what the hell? Where'd it go? It's right there. Did you lose the show notes like Rob? You, you, like one, you, need to, you need to calm down. You're doing a little too much. BZ Grips have been manufacturing handgun grips since 2003. We have a reputation for it. With a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation, top-tier manufacturers choose VZ Grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and are manufactured from proprietary G10 grips, micarta, carbon fiber, or polymer. Available with varying degrees of textures, VZ Grip offers a wide range of grips for all different firearms types. Made in the USA, VZ Grips gives you the grip you can count on. Feature grip of the week is the Browning High Power Palm Swell VZ Recon. And yes, I believe they do have Dirty Olive. Nice. Check VZ Grips out at vzgrips.com. Coupon code GGR15 gets you 15% off handgun and rifle grips. vzgrips.com. Nicely done, trusty. (laughs) <laughs> trusty, <laughs> trusty. Uh, so, meanwhile you know my my great character voice is you know easy I, I hope next week they all come out <laughs> <laughs> nice. so did you guys do anything cool in firearms this week i felt like crap all weekend so no i didn't do anything <laughs> yeah i installed that hawk hawk optic sorry you feel good rock yeah, that's kind of sucks. Yeah, you know, when you wake up and you're like, ugh, it's like, if you don't feel good, any time to play with guns, you know? Yeah. Or fly. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, uh, I put that Hawk Optic on one to, what is it, one to six, one to eight? I think it's, I believe it's a one to eight. Yeah, so I installed that. Uh, I got to get out to the range, but we had a lot going on. Because coming up in like a day. 10 days, 10 days is the competition I got to shoot it in. And I haven't even zeroed it. I haven't gone to the range. Nothing. <laughs> so it, it should be dang interesting how I do in competition. Uh, it has a really good trigger on it, though, because it's a Marine Corps DMR. I mean, you know, M16A4 clone uh, with the Geisley, what is it, SSE trigger? Could so be. I've been... And then I can shoot it off a bag or whatever, so it's no big deal. So I've been dry firing, you know, a lot, aiming, trying to get used to shooting through our actual scope because I really haven't used one in damn near a decade. So uh, it, hopefully <laughs> I don't suck too bad. Uh, you could you can help, it, Tony. Hey, listen, it, 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 you catch your L, you catch your L. Do you have a is, Do you have a diversity shoot between now and then? I got a diversity shoot tomorrow. That's what I thought. Now, well, I was going to say, just go a few minutes early, take the rifle, and maybe you can side her in. At 25? Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll be closer. Oh, what, how does that? Mm, it's closer than just putting it on top of the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, what is it? 25, <laughs> 25, 200 close, something like that. 
Hey, man, look, I'll just zero it and figure it out. It ain't like, uh, you know, the first string of fire you have to be particularly on. You just have to drop down, lock in the position, and just hold it there and see what happens. That's the way I look at it. And then I can, what you, what do you call that? Uh, uh, Kentucky, when did you? Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, it's 10, it's 10 rounds. It's 10 rounds timed, but you have pretty much enough time to get those 10 rounds off. Yeah. Like 20 seconds. And, yeah. And you can do it like four times in a row before you have to go out and pull targets and, and do that kind of thing. And it's hours. It's like a four hour competition. You can use multiple guns. You can break out the Mosins and everything, but this time, uh, because it's a Marine Corps shoot. Oh, I'm sorry. If people don't know what I'm talking about, it's a Marine Corps shoot and they cover like every m- major war. So you can actually revolutionary war and they have black powder rifles at 50 yards, uh, civil war. Uh, oh, nice. Barbary pirates. Um, just, just like iconic Marine Corps uh, battles, Guadalcanal, which you use World War II firearms. They have World War I firearms with Bella Woods. Like they name it different things. Korea and Vietnam, all up to Fallujah, the Battle of Fallujah. So that's what I'm going to enter, the Battle of Fallujah with uh, M16, A4 clone with optic. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, I actually made it out to the range. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, but I did get a couple guns in for review, so I had to take them out and try them out. One of them is the High Point 3095 30 Super Carry Carbine, which I was more impressed with the way it shot than I expected. Uh, I have to say I do think the 30 Super Carry round has its place. I just hope it sticks around. And more people put it in. I actually hope more people put it in small handguns so you can get a couple extra rounds, but that's my hope for it. And then I did also, uh, G force arms just came out with their rapture, uh, compact handgun Glock gish Glock components. Uh, it's like G 26 size, with a slightly longer grip on it, but yeah, so it's got cut for optics, uh, either an RMR or RMSC, so you can do either one. Uh, it's even It even came with the little teeny locator pins, and it's got little pin holes in it, so not just screw holes. Uh, decent fiber optic sights. So far, I actually, it shot really nice. I was pretty impressed with how well it shot. Uh, recoil was less than I expected, felt-wise being a three and a quarter inch barrel. I don't know. You guys will get a full review on it, but I was pleasantly surprised at how well it shot. Also, I put some more rounds through the lone wolf dusk. Also, while I was out there, uh, swapped out some of the ammo from, you know, target barn with some one fifteen other grainers just to try it out on different weights, different ammo, just to see how well it did. It's still, Still ran fine, so it now has an optic on it. Uh, so we'll run it some more rounds, and we'll know more for you guys. Tell you more, all that stuff. Let's see. What else did I do? Nothing. So, announcements. Patriot Patchco, bandwidth sponsor. You know them. If you don't, go check them out at Patriot Patchco. Uh, patch of the Month Club, I guess November Patch is an eagle with an axe and an AR and it says long live the Republic and you get a free bonus bullet bill patch too. It looks like, so go check that out. Check out all the other stuff they offer over there because it's cool stuff. I guess if you use the code FRN over there and you're buying something, they'll also send you a free FRN patch with, with your purchase. Don't forget our affiliates and discounts. We appreciate it. Uh, I know coming up here soon, there's going to be tons of deals. In fact, Tony posted a Palmetto State Armory deal for 400 some bucks. You get a full pistol with optics and something like that. I don't remember exactly the price, but if you click through our affiliate links, we appreciate it. Uh, Like the Palmetto State Armory one, we don't have a discount. It's just the affiliate, but some of the other 
ones in there are just discounts. Some are co- combination ones. So we appreciate listen, it. Listen, if you don't if if you don't get it, tell your friends about it because really this is the time of year that is pretty much built for this. And if you're not taking advantage of it, at least get your friends to take advantage of it. I mean, yeah, it helps us about this much, <laughs> but truly. <laughs> I mean, but my whole thing is is getting guns in your hands, getting guns in your friends' hands, getting those accessories before there's a run on anything. Why not have yourself set up? Yep. I mean, because four hundred and forty dollars for a friggin' Glock clone with an optic. Yeah, what was it? Ridiculous. The dagger with a hollow sun, four hundred seven or something. Four hundred seven. Yeah, the dot only version. Yeah, for 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 and and Ameriglow co witness iron sights, like like it was. I'm like, this is ridiculous because this is cheaper than even if you got one of the blue label Glocks. Mm-hmm. Like like this entire thing set up was cheaper well, than a blue label Glock. That's one 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 thing I will mention about this G Force Arms Rapture. It is made mm-hmm. in America. But MSRP on it, I think, is like three hundred and seventy nine bucks. Not a, not as <laughs> not as cheap as a dagger, but you're but lo- you're looking at a different size bucks. gun. Yeah, it's it's Bro, not a eight hundred dollar gun. How crazy is this? How crazy so, is this that we're at the point now that again, Glock clones, which oh well, it's not a Glock. Yeah, but it's a it's Glock not. clone. Yeah, it's I a mean, it's a, it, it's a Glock that fits your hand. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's, it's a Glock. Glock that fits your hand, but it's a Glock. Glock. It takes all Glock parts. I'm like, dude, we're we're at the four hundred dollar or below level for Glocks. That's yep. when, when were Glocks like that? Nineties, four hundred bucks, maybe. Yeah, early nineties, maybe, and, and then Glock. I think they were. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying, man. I mean, and the optics ready, and that had that had uh, uh, four durations, right? I mean, even if you're looking to build a Glock, like I've got two polymer 80 kits in my uh, drawer, you know, I can get the uppers for, get the whole uppers for them, get to build that kits probably for like 50 bucks, you know, I mean, they mm-hmm. had a whole upper for uppers for sale for like the whole barrel slide assembly for like 200 bucks. Yeah. It was like 210 or 209 or something. I mean, it was close enough. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, Gee, threaded barrel cut for our MR side. It's like, well, that gum, you know? Yeah, and, and, and and it's like, well, why? I'm going to understand something as a gun guy, as a gun person. One, they're not going to spoil. They're not going to go bad. Mm-hmm. All right. They're just not going to go bad. Um, use it to introduce. And it's not even like something you can do this year. It could be five years from now. And you have a totally new living situation. And you have a daughter, stepdaughter, stepson that you introduced to firearms with this gun that you caught at an awesome deal. And it's not going to hurt to go, Hey, here you go. Go off to college, get your first house. You and your wife, you know what I mean? It's like, that's why you do that stuff. So you have it on hand so you can help others. So yeah, take advantage of our discount codes and our, all that stuff, man. Or like we were Don't saying be a earlier, sucker. you buy them. And then when there's a run on guns, it's like, Hey, I've got this upper for sale. I bought it for 200 bucks and Oh, you'll be, give me 500 for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you're not gouging if that's what it goes for. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rob, you want to read that thing? Mm. Oh, is this the part where I say the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the firearms radio radio network and or their employers? This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. I just had a thought. I wonder what T. Rob would sound like. Probably boring as all get out. I think we've tried it. I think I think T Rob's been done. It. I don't think so. It sounded like a hillbilly or something. We're like, nah, that's not right. <laughs> well, well, listen, all, right. listen all, right, all all of the all the T's they have a a, a a southern accent, but it's all a different southern accent. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. <laughs> to differentiate between uh, North Carolina, because that's where you're from, right, Rob? No, I'm from I'm from Florida, man. I'm a Florida okay, man, so born and raised. You, so you're a Florida man and you got that accent. Zane's a Florida man and he got his accent. And Rusty's from Tennessee, and it's like 
It's close. They all sound alike, but it's like your mannerisms are different. <laughs> yeah, inflections. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good thing. Oh, good. Right. It says we do have a main topic tonight. It's sponsored by Walker Defense Research. Walker Defense provides shooters with the finest, most innovative quality tactical accessories and firearm components around. From their Nile grip panels to their Nero muzzle brakes, no details are ever left behind. Only top quality materials are used in the manufacturing process. Together, all of this gives you some of the best firearm performance around. Everything they have to offer is probably made in the U.S. of A. Walker Defense, where American ingenuity meets bleeding edge technology. And our Walker Defense product of their week is their titanium bolt carrier group. Yummy. I want one. Uh, vis- uh, visit Walker Defense Research at walkerdr.com. And remember, use the code INSIDER15 for 15% off everything at walkerdr.com. Wow. And Chad, that... you want to tell us about our main topic, which is a primary or product review, which is a primary arms SLX 3X micro prism. Sure. Well, that's not one of their longest names, but it's still a mouthful. Well, I suppose if you, st- if you stuck the reticle in there and everything else, it would be their normal. I'm just 15 characters. Exactly. And I mean, people, if they search this and want to find the review, if they type in primary arms, SLX three X micro prism or prism, that's probably going to show up. If they typed all the other stuff, they're not going to type that in. We know that. Mm-hmm. So yes, this is exactly what it, what you think it is. A three power prism site, but we'll go on with that. Many years back, fixed power optics were very common. Tony's probably old enough to remember them. Rob is too. <laughs> I am too. They tended to be larger in size when compared to say, Oh, a standard tube style red dot. Fixed power optics have come back around thanks to small magnified prism optics like the primary arms SLX 3X prism. The SLX is so much lighter and smaller than those fixed power scopes of the old days. The SLX 3X prism also gives you plenty of new benefits that just weren't available back in the day. So let's welcome in the small fixed three power optic of the future or now offered in FDE to match all your tactical needs. They did send me the FDE version. Primary Arms set the bar high when they've released the 1X Micro Prism, which is probably one of my actual favorite optics that I own. Uh, it is just fantastic. Then they decided to raise it a little higher when they added the 3X and 5X models. Of course, this is on the 3X version. Fixed Power Octas have, have their place in the shooting world. With the XLX, you get super small package size plus some magnification to see targets at mid-range distances. Since the magnification isn't super overpowering, you can still use the optic up close. It doesn't all weigh that much. It tips the scales at just about 8 ounces. So, for being in Primary Arms SLX line of products, you get an exceptional value with super clear glass. One of the great aspects of the Primary Arms 3X Prism is its reticle. Primary Arms uses one of their ACSS reticles, or as it's called, the Advanced Combined Sighting System. In the SLX 3X, this is the Raptor ACSS reticle. The Raptor gives you ranging, bullet drop compensation, wind holds, and moving target leads. All in a simple-to-use red-colored reticle if it's illuminated. Uh, Of course, the illuminated part is the horseshoe around the center, and the center chevron. Uh, The ranging wind and bullet drop then take up the reticle below the center chevron. Uh, The compensations are not illuminated. Uh, The illumination has 13 intensity settings, three of which you can use with night vision. Uh, Using the ACSS Raptor is really easy, of course. The large horseshoe lets you shoot up close targets quickly. Even though the SLX is three power optic, still works good up close. The Chevron and Stadia then give you precision shots out farther. I found the reticle to be a good combination. Compromise between close and far range targets. Now being the 3X prism site, I am a little slower at shooting an array of close targets. But then again, I'm more accurate when I shoot out farther distances like 200 yards. So Primary Arms did a good job with the reticle on this particular micro prism. The illuminated part of the reticle is daylight bright, even in direct sunlight. If for some reason it does wash out a tiny bit, the reticle is etched into the glass. So of course you get the typical non-illuminated black reticle anytime. 
even if the battery dies. Now, if you're worried about the micro prism won't work for your firearm, don't fret. Micro prism, primary arms gave the micro prism plenty of mounting options, and they all come with the optic. Uh, the XLS SLX manual states eight different mounting heights, essentially from rail height of 1.1 inches to center of prism to 2.075 inches to center of optic, which is pretty far up there. There's also one other option. If you have a carry handle AR, fixed or removable, the SLX micro prism will mount directly to the carry handle. If you want to use a different mount than the one supplied, the SLX micro prisms use the industry standard mini prism footprint. So you can think like ACOG, stuff like that. Those mounts are the same. One aspect of the primary arms micro prisms is their exceptional clarity. For the price you pay for one of these, you do get extraordinary clear glass. I've also found that even though the eye relief is stated at 2.7 inches, it is very forgiving. Since the micro prisms have an etched reticle, they also don't have the clarity problems for people with astigmatisms, like if it was a standard red dot, making the ACSS reticle super clear. Being that the SLX micro prism is three power, it also has a decent field of view at 100 yards, which is 38 feet. So you, of course, see a 38 foot wide circle when looking through the prism side at 100 yards. Now, the SLX 3X also has a few other features that I should probably mention. First off, it does use the primary arms auto live motion sensing on and off. So when you pick up the SLX prism, the reticle turns on at whatever brightness the knob's set to. Of course, after not sensing movement, it go, the optic goes into the, its hibernation mode where basically the reticle's off until you move the optic again. Uh, I do absolutely love the auto live technology. Works fantastic on the primary arms micro prisms. This auto live also gives the 3X micro prism battery life of around 29,000 hours, which is pretty fantastic for any magnified optic. Now, of course, the windage and elevation adjustments are also protected from being hit or accidentally turned. You can even adjust them with the rim of a cartridge. I've done it because, you know, it was easier than grabbing a screwdriver. And that pretty much sums that part up. Now, primary arms SLX 3X micro prism fits, fits in well for a fixed mid-range optic. It allows close range work. Every time I look through one of the primary arms micro prisms, I am still surprised at the optic clarity. Add in the auto live function and you have a great combo of features. So if you're looking for a small fixed three power optic, check out the primary arms line of SLX micro prism. Now for the firearms insider review, key points claim to fame. You probably have guessed it's a small lightweight fixed three power prism target market is pretty much anybody that wants one of those. Features and benefits. This one has an FDE finish. Uh, let's see. The length is 2.95 inches. It weighs 7.95 ounces. Does have that ACSS bullet drop reticle. 80 MOA of adjustments. It is quarter MOA click values for those adjustments. Does run on a 2032 battery. So pretty much standard. Comes with lens covers and of course the primary arms lifetime warranty. Uh, you can also get it in black anodized or it, you can also get it in a Griffin mill reticle instead of the 556 version that I was running. There is a what others are saying in there. There's also a link to another review. Price point on these things is $319.99. Same price on Amazon. So if you need it now, you might as well head over to Primary Arms. And Primary Arms, of course has sales all the time. So if you want it cheaper, I'm sure you can find one over there. And the R rating, the pros, I gave it, it's clear. It has a bright ACSS reticle. The auto live is awesome. The small size, the various mounting heights and the cons is the reticle can be a little small to see just because of the way it is designed. Not terrible, but it's there. So I did give it a score of eight, which is great. Did you two have any questions on this thing? 
So, <clears throat> and and it's, it's crazy mounted, because it, it's mounted to this airsoft rifle. See. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I I like it on the airsoft rifle. What got me though was um, because I looked at I shot the one X earlier this year, uh, two three two three months ago at this point. Yeah, probably. Uh, beginning of the summer. Yeah, beginning of the summer. And uh, dude, it is crazy clear. Like, like holy poop. Yeah, and All right. so, and the three X is just as clear. Now, my my thing with it though, when I looked at it, was real the realization that it's a one X with a bullet drop compensation, but all that crap is so small I can't see. It. Uh, I'm like, that's really tiny. Now I totally understand that if I had a three X magnifier that I'd flip up behind it, I'd probably be able to see it better. But that is it. What you have is a three X, and I'm thinking it is the same size. It's a, as the one X. It's a little bit larger. I find it easier to see than the one X. Okay. The one X, I, for me, the one X is just is just the horseshoe with the. I don't use the ranging on it because it's too hard for me to see on the one X. The three X is easier to see. It is slightly. Okay. It is slightly larger. Uh, I mean, none of the pictures can really show it as well. The picture in the review at the firearmsinsider.tv kind of does a good idea, but that target is like 25 yards out. So I guess the way I look at it is I've ran the EOTechs with the flip out magnifiers and those are big and bulky. I prefer to run something like this and just be done with it. You know? Yeah. The nice thing is, is gotcha. yeah, they're small. You don't have that, that flipper thing. Is that, that, uh, it, it's a pain when it's off to the side. It's a pain because it's getting in the way of the rest of the gear you got. And when it's you know on it, it works okay, but it's just extra crap you got to have on your rifle, you know? Yeah, and and like I said, the the nice thing about the three three power is is you know like Tony and people who've been around know that like an ACOG you can get two and a halfs or fours or yeah. you know, and you can because of the illuminated reticle and the way it's designed, you can still run at it seven yards if you need to and it's not as bad it's a little slower for me if you practiced a lot with it it probably wouldn't matter and you still keep both eyes open with this thing right when you run it yep now of course if i'm shooting a 200 yard target i might close an eye just but if you're running it if you're shooting at super close targets you just have them open anyway just that's right that's how i do it and i did i did have it mounted on my A2 A carry handle for a little while. I shot it that way. It's and, and the problem with it is, is the problem I find with anything mounted up there is it's just too tall for me. I mean, I can do tall tall mounts, but that is just too tall uh, for me. I mean, like something like this. Do they have a flat mount for it or a direct Picatinny mount for it? They do. Basically, if you look at the okay. pictures, you basically take that spacer out. That's okay. The spacers are various heights, heights and sizes, uh, okay, okay. and you take it out, and then it's just direct. So, like if you're mounting it on something that doesn't need the height, nice. you like yeah, like the top of a PS90, exactly something like that. You can mount it directly, and then it's center of the optic height is 1.1 inches above the rail, instead of like you know 1.6 or two or you know. Mm-hmm. So it's it's down there. So that was the Primary Arms SLX 3X Microprism. Now we're into the product spotlight and discussion. And we kind of had a pre-discussion about this, but you guys didn't hear it. So Tony was complaining about he couldn't find anything. (laughs) This is the CP Firearms Mantis MK4 upper receiver, I guess is what you would call it for a Ruger Mark IV. MSRP on these is $1,000. Tony was asking me where I found it, and I'll tell you that here in a little bit and after I explain them. And they are a serialized part because if you know anything about the Ruger, you know, Mark series, the upper is the serialized part. So therefore, this has to go through an FFL. It's not like an AR upper. You know, so that that's just here nor there. But... This essentially takes your Ruger Mark IV lower, if you have one, turns it into a 22 long rifle carbine. Now, 
it has a carbon fiber 14 inch handguard, you know, nylon front barrel shroud support bushing fixed to permanently fixed to that carbon fiber. They're still running. It does run a five and a half inch rifled barrel that is so it's pinned and welded. So it makes it this whole shroud system 16 and an eighth inches long. Of course, it's it's light, but we'll go into that. You, of course, you need the Ruger Mark IV receiver. Uh, chassis, the rest of it's made of 6061 aluminum. They Cerakote it black, uh, the primary chassis, and has handguards permanently fixed. There's a stock adapter threaded for standard M4 stocks. This also comes with their stock. Ambidextrous side charging handle. So it's cross-drilled into the bolt using alloy fasteners, of course, locked with set screws, glass-filled nylon handle, and the handle's pretty useful. It is reversible left to right, which makes it quite nice. Custom lightweight stock, of course, it's the M4 threaded with an alloy steel castle nut, but then it's carbon fiber tube, open foam cell cheek rest. Yeah, it's got some nylon components, thread adapters, butt plate adapters, butt plate. The Ruger Mark IV bolt it's upgraded with Volkorts and extractor and firing pin. Uh, Ruger, Ruger optics rail, Cerakoted to match the chassis, of course. Weight target of three pounds based on a stock Ruger 2245 lower uh, with no optics mounted and no magazine in the firearm. It does come with a case and tools to make it, to adjust it. Stock is pretty much fully adjustable butt plate for tilt, stuff like that. Basically, you see this thing and you're like, okay, that's expensive. But then you see what's gone into it and you're like, yeah, that's not so bad. But then when you understand that this is for a race 22, certain competitions, depending on what you're using it for, then you're like, okay, it makes sense. I do not own one of these. I did shoot one at the last steel match I went to and I didn't say anything about it because I knew I was going to put it in the show notes after shooting it. This thing is light. I, I don't, if I was shooting, you know, steel challenge type stuff with it after the match, they left one set up and I, they let me shoot it. This thing is fast, like fast light. I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's fantastic handling. If you were a semi-professional and you shot 22 matches, like literally I was shooting low ready, like just over two seconds, five shots at five shot steel stage. They're quick. They're super lightweight. I'll let you guys go on with it. I know Tony has some stuff he looked up on it. Yeah, so I was checking it out because I wanted to find out, one, I didn't know what it was uh, because the initial picture that we had, I'm like, is this a fishing pole? What is this? But uh, I checked it out and I found it on one of the forums and pretty much you just put the upper on your lower, which, again, if you're running competition, you've put a lot of rounds through your pistol lower. And, and now this pops on. So you have the same trigger pull. You have the same control locations. Because I've shot the Rimfire Challenge using a Ruger 1022 and a Ruger SR22. And you could measure my times with a calendar. Because dudes with Mark IVs just smoked me. They have the triggers. They have all that tuned up. And I'm talking about a, a, it was a Tandem Cross Ruger Mark IV. It's about $1,000, if not more. Like $1,200. It's the cost of a, a, a CZ uh, Shadow 2. They run about the same price. So to add another 1000 or more dollars to get uh, the rifle version to run Steel Challenge, that's decent. It's 3.8 pounds, but it's all centered over the pistol grip, and they have it weighted so it's neutral. So pretty much you take three, almost four pounds, which is now the weight of a bag of sugar, by the way. It's no longer five pounds. Uh, it's, it's less than four pounds, and it's balanced so you don't feel it. That's why it's so fast. Mm -hmm. And the front end is carbon fiber. 
So this is just set up to run, and and, and it and it's a rifle because the barrel is sixteen and an eighth inches. Yep. But you just pop it on, and of course, using the Ruger Mark IV, it's one freaking pen. Unlike old days when who knows what kind of origami bending you'd have to do to do a Mark III. <laughs> so, so I I think this fits a niche, um, especially after I took took my airsoft gun out and ran it in a in a twenty two. And man, they just beat me like horribly. <laughs> they beat me horribly. So yeah, to take something and what do you think a trigger pull is on a lot of these guys' competition pistols? Oh, they're probably <laughs> two pounds. <laughs> the exhale that goes off. A pound and a half, two pounds probably. Yeah. I mean would no. be so Yeah, so I think it, it's really cool. Um I really wish they could send me one, but I'd have to get a mark for and go through all that and whatever but um because dude just to come back with this i mean i probably get my butt kicked still but man i'd look cool getting my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah at least you look cool getting your butt kicked exactly <laughs> now now we were talking earlier you were saying something about you know trying to convince to tell people it, yeah it's a niche <sighs> it's a niche market but it's like it's like you say it's like you know, if you if you're driving an indie car or an F one car, you're not going to drive it on the street to go to work. I mean, this kind and, of and he was getting, yeah, he was getting a lot of that, and it was getting on my nerves because I'm like, dudes, this is not the same thing. This is not your squirrel rifle. This is not your twenty two. This this is a race car. This is meant for competition. And you can, of course, use anything else because Chad, Chad was like, well, I'd shoot squirrels with it. I'm like, yeah, for $1,000, you better shoot a whole bunch of squirrels with it. Mm-hmm. But but I'm like, it. you can do other things with it, but it's designed for this one thing. And if that is not your one thing, then no, it won't make sense to drop $1,000 on. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was like, I'm looking at it going, oh, this is nice. I'm like, nah, I'm probably not going to buy one. I'm like, I'm in the same point as you, Tony. It's like, I don't have a Mark IV 2245. I mean, I might consider this a little more if I did, (laughs) just because like you said, with the balance and everything, it was, it was fantastic to shoot. I mean, it's fast. It's light. I, that's why I put it in here. I was like, it impressed me that much. I was like, this thing's nice. And that's awesome, dude, because this is the kind of thing we talk about when we talk about innovation. Everything doesn't have to be another AR-15. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. So that is the CP Firearms Mantis MK4 for your Ruger Mark IV. Next up, we have the Black Rain Ordnance Bro Contour. MSRP on this is twenty five eighty nine, and yes, the bro stands for Black Rain Ordinance. If you hadn't figured that out yet, figure I'll just get it out there so that Tony won't ask about all this bro talk. <laughs> but basically, this is a precision rifle. They kind of designed it for hunting. Uh, carbon fiber wrapped barrel. They're running the Amend Two stock on it, which I we haven't really talked about yet, but it's there. It's you know, it's kind of a chassis stocked style, you know, so that, you know, it's a precision rifle. You can get it in six millimeter Creedmoor, six, five Creed, six, five PRC and three Oh eight Winchester. It does have a barrel length of 22 inches. Twist rate is one and eight or one and 10, depending on which it is threaded five H 24. Now the overall weight, it's eight and a half pounds. So, it's not super light, but when you compare it to the other version, it is. This is the hunting version. I mean, depending on what you're hunting, you know, you may want to lug it around. Or if you're doing tree stand style, then it's probably not as big a deal. Out west, hunting, meaning plains, Colorado area, Idaho, stuff like that, you may want to. It just really depends on what you want to do. But it is adjustable length of pull. Overall length is 45 inches. Uh, It's running the Black Rain Ordnance Derrico 
coated precision three lug receiver, 60 degree bolt throw, integrated 20 MOA pick rail, integrated recoil lugs, and their switch barrel technology. Of course, it's a Remington 700 footprint uh, with wire EDM cut raceways for exacting tolerances. Uh, the bolt is hardened 4140 steel. It does have a Trigger Tech trigger built into it. Flat, flat straight trigger, adjustable from a pound to three and a half pounds. The carbon fiber wrapped barrel is 936 diameter. And of course, it is AICS magazine compatible because why would it not be? And the thing is, is like with this, I like it. And it's kind of like the other one. This is a, kind of a semi-special niche rifle for certain people. You know, I would probably, something like this, it's like eight and a half pounds. I'm like, well, it depends on what you're doing with it. But I use it more of a precision style, just target rifle. If it were me, than a hunting rifle. But then I guess if I wanted to go hunting, I could drag it out also. But it's kind of one of those things. I don't think the price is bad for what you get with, with their action and the carbon wrap barrel and all that stuff. I think, I think price wise you're getting something decent for what you're paying. Tony, Rob. I'd have to see it before I could pass judgment on it. It looks nice. It looks sweet. And that's where I'm at with something like this because again, and what caliber? It was a six five pre worn six six arc, right? No, six six and six and a half creed more, depending on which one you want. Six five PRC, okay. PRC and then the old stand. That was it. That was it. Then the old standby in three hundred eight, and I don't see why you would want this in three hundred eight, but some people might. Well, I mean, three hundred eight is still viable, man. Everybody acts like somehow six five Creed to go wasn't well, even a hunting cartridge. But. Well, and the, and the thing is, is the one advantage with three hundred eight Winchester is, is it's still way cheaper than the other stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> I, I laugh. I want to talk about the ammo thing real quick at the end, if you, if you know, the run on ammo, because I talked to my ammo sponsor uh, about it. But my whole thing with these is you're in the market for this. This is what you're looking for. Don't tell me that I could buy a Savage Axis for less or I could buy a Ruger Predator. for. I'm not looking for that. This is this is a totally different thing. Could you do the same thing? Well, it depends on your skill level and everything else. And you can probably get a lighter rifle. But this is what you're looking for. This is what you get. I, I, I'd like to try to compare apples to apples when we're talking about this thing. and 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 that's... I think that's what people kind of get caught up. Like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, you you could shoot something with a Mosin again too. Yeah, okay. This ain't it. <laughs> All right. If we're gonna talk about hunting with a Mosin and, and that's your main thing, then yeah, we need to compare it to Savage Axis and Ruger's All American line. But when you're talking about something like this, you're talking about this twenty eight, twenty five hundred dollar price range. Yep. And, and you're, gonna, you're gonna get a lot of other features. You're gonna get like triggers, you're gonna get bedding, you're gonna get all that stuff. But this is in the price range with the features and the products you get. But yeah. that lead time is insane. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing is is you know, there's a lot of there are comparable rifles out there in this price range that basically have similar features. So, you know, it's not like they're bringing this out and saying, Oh, we want four grand for this thing, knowing that everybody else's is 2,500 bucks. So they, they, yeah, we talking CZs, uh, what the savage one tens. Yeah. I don't think they're that much, but there's, there's rifles out well, there. For, there's some of them. Yeah. In there. Yep. So that is the new bro contour from black rain ordinance. <laughs> Bro, bro, and <laughs> no, I'm not. It was still the funniest thing. I was like, "What is this, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> the, the the funny part was was when I was first looking into it, I did the same thing. I'm like, "Bro, why why did they call it the bro?" I mean, it makes no sense. And they're like, "Oh, never mind." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, man, sometimes you know. <laughs> yeah. So next up, we got a knife. Cobra Tech brought out a new folder. It's called the Wolverine. MSRP is a whole fifty nine ninety nine, 
And if you use our discount code, you can get like six bucks off that. I think it's 10% off. <laughs> so you'll want to make sure and do that. This is a new folder from them. Liner lock. If, you know, I don't know if they have many liner locks. They, most of theirs are out the fronts, it seems like, and then those autos. So uh, black titanium coated D2 blade, G210 handle. It is a drop point blade with ceramic ball bearings, of course. So durability, smoothness, stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Ceramic ball bearing three and an eighth inch blade, four and a quarter inch handle. It's seven and three eighths inch overall. Does have a lanyard loop on the back. Weighs 4.1 ounces. It is only, the pocket clip is only right hand carry. It looks like a super deep pocket clip for those of you that want a super deep pocket clip. Of course, the D2, which we know is Rusty's, one of Rusty's favorites, but it is an exceptional pocket knife, EDC knife material. I I, I agree with him on that. And for the price, you, I don't know if you can really beat it that much. Everything else on it is you know, top quality stuff. So for 60 bucks, it's there. The only thing I would, I would like is if it had a reversible clip, but not for me, but just for other people. Cause I know other people carry them in different places. Tony, Rob, what do you got on it? Looks like a nice knife. And for 50, 60 bucks, so something I wouldn't mind taking in the woods. And if I lost it, okay, I'd be sad, but I wouldn't be that sad, you know? Yeah, I will mention it is a flipper. So it's a, or it's got a thumb hole. So two ways of opening it. Yeah, I was looking at this thing the whole time and I'm like, you know, the way this knife is set up, it, it's it's pretty decent. I just wonder, you know, because it's, it's three and an eighth inch. So it, it it's got enough room that I can actually flip it. You know, sometimes when you make them too short, you can't hold the knife and flip it because you're only holding with like two fingers and some weirdness. Right, right, but right. This is a good looking knife. Um, I checked out their stuff and the way they present it because Rusty actually sent me one. Uh, and if anybody else wants to send me one, like Cobra Tech, uh, they can so we can do a raffle and giveaway and help raise money. But I looked at it. Because I got this one here that we're going to figure out a giveaway. And I'm like, dude, these are really nice looking knives. And for the price that they're going for with the blade still they are and the build quality, I can't really say anything that bad about these. I mean, and this is American company. not I mean, this made in China, right? But yeah, I think they're manufactured in China. Yeah, I think they, I don't know if they assemble, the, assemble them here. To, Rusty kind of explained it because he talked to them. But they are the the materials and stuff are made overseas and then shipped here, and QC is done here. So I don't know if they're completely assembled overseas and then shipped here and QC'd, or if their parts are all made over there and they're assembled here. So I'm just saying, um, look into this company and check out the stuff they have. They doesn't have they don't have a Civivi line, which has like. So Vivi makes Sig take a step back, like, whoa, dude, don't you have a lot of skews? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do. I do. The thing is, is I like the Savivi knives. And, and, you know, oh, I'm not saying yeah, I'm just right. talking about the number of different oh, models man. they have compared to him here. Well, but but the, that's the funny part is, is you look at Cobra Tech and you look at the shop knives and it drops down and they have a ton of different knives. A lot of them are out the front style. But oh snap! Whoa, I did not know that. I didn't know they had this many. Yeah, oh. they have a lot. <laughs> oh well, I take back whatever. Holy crap! <laughs> I don't know how did I not. Never mind. They're neck and neck with Civi. <laughs> yep, they got a ton of them. Well, I don't know. They make California compliant versions. So what is that? A butter knife? <laughs> I, I I don't no, know. It, oh no no it didn't oh. it didn't say New York compliant. That would be the butter knife. So this is a so toothpick. California compliant <laughs> is is pretty much the size of your car keys. Yeah, I, yeah, something like that. <laughs> because it's got to have All like right. a two inch blade or something. But back to the Wolverine. Uh, the one in the show notes is the black version. They make a green with a looks like a satin finished blade instead of the coated black blade. But you know, either way, they have some options. And if they don't, if that doesn't fit fit the bill. 
now that Tony knows they have a bunch of different other options. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you talking about, dude? They got a crud load. <laughs> I have no idea, because when Rusty sent the one he did, right. I think I just checked it out, and I thought it was, you know, just a couple. I, I guess I just didn't remember scrolling down. Yeah, yeah. Because seeing so many blades. Because he sent you, didn't he send you, like, the Diablo auto? Yeah, he sent or, me the, the Diablo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which I still think is probably a great knife especially an auto for that price but hey whatever mm -hmm. uh check them out man american yep. company yep there you go so that's the cobra tech wolverine now <gasps> oh dude what they got an american pride series with stuff like we the people and don't tread on me knives yeah they got all kinds of stuff hey that's cool yeah yeah and you know where you can't find those <laughs> <laughs> primary arms <laughs> <laughs> but I think they're both in Texas. But Primary Arms does seek to provide you the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. They do carry knives. They just don't carry that one. <laughs> Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Now, our Primary Arms product of the week this week is is some optic that I need a rifle for, but I would really like this optic. It is the primary arms GLX four and a half to 27 by 56 first focal plane, Athena mill reticle. And it probably has even more <laughs> names to it, but <laughs> yes, I, that's why I put this in there. I would love to get my hands on one of these course i don't have a rifle to put it on so i need to get a hold of a rifle to put it on first <laughs> it would look kind of funny on the high point so get a bro rifle yeah if they'll send me one i'll get a bro rifle then i could say i have a bro rifle now mm -hmm. you can sign up for the primary arms newsletter and more by going to frn.deal slash pa uh you use the code firearms radio and you can get something cool check firearmsradio.net slash pa for that latest deal Listener feedback got pushed till next week because, well, that's our 500th show. And, you know, you need to be here. If you're not here for the live show, of course, you can always tune in on Fridays when it, when the podcast releases. But don't forget to sign up for the giveaway we got over there. Uh, there's going to be two prize packs so you can win cool stuff. You know, hey, it's at firearmsinsider.tv. Listen next week. We're going to have, you know, a couple guests on. One of them may or may not have, you know, started this show kind of. <laughs> and the other one just technically owns the network. So, you know, <laughs> something like that. Tony, tell us about some diversity shoot that's tomorrow or. <laughs> well, one, it, it's it, diversity shoots tomorrow. You're going to miss it. Hey, listen, you're just not cool enough to go. Sorry. Um, you, you've been making excuses. We've been doing this for eight years and you ain't showed up to one yet. So we got another one coming up in two weeks now. So there should be another one before the end of uh, November at Gunfire Range in Woodland Park. Tomorrow's events taking place in Union Hill. But what I wanted to talk about was the ammo thing and nothing has happened. Nothing has really like happened with ammo companies being sold with Hornady having an explosion and, and sad to hear that someone lost their life in it. But no, ammo prices are up because of a lot of YouTubers flapping their gums and talking about Hamas coming in on parasails like it like it's Red Dawn 3. And it's just been panic buying by American gun owners based on rumors and fears. Nothing has happened. No new legislation. Nobody's shutting down, making ammo. There's been no rerouting of our ammo to Israel. It's just people listen to YouTubers, and that's why we try to be real and not blow smoke up your butt because it's ridiculous. So if you're not finding out, oh, and the price got bumped up too. That, so I talked to Ammo Lab about that. There is, but there's still deals out there on ammo. I mean, like locally, the local... Mm -hmm. Uh, nine millimeter was ten ninety nine a box, fifty. 
So check out our friends over at Ammo Lab because they're helping me and they donate ammo yeah, and, to and even Diversity Suit. And Target Barn, they helped us with ammo. So, Bro, help yeah. out companies to help us, man. I mean, you listen to the podcast. There are companies out there to help us carry this out so you can hear the show, so we can run guns, so we can shoot, so I can get people introduced to firearms. When you look at stuff like that, and also, uh, Ammo Lab also sells gear and other stuff like that. But check it out. Um, I- I'm just seeing like a lot of people listen to these a holes, and you don't understand that these people get what do you call that? Like they they get paid if you go and start buying ammo from certain companies. Well, so I think I, I I think it's the same as like our affiliate links, but I don't. They <laughs> they they might have better deals because you know. I don't know how anybody could make money on affiliates unless you had like a million of them and you had millions of people buying stuff on them because I mean, literally every so often I'll check ours to see if it's even worth pulling money out <laughs> to put in the account. Well, see, I, don't, I don't think it's everyone. No, I think like there's a few big names to say something that a whole bunch of other people co-sign on. We're not going to blow smoke up your ass because we've been around for a while and we've seen this happen a hundred times. So we're not going to tell you. It's like, stop. <laughs> and, and Buy yourself a box or two of ammo a week, one for the range and one for your stockpile, and you'll never be financially crushed because you'll have some. Yeah. And I, I mean, and that's the thing is, is because like, I would love to buy ammo right now before it starts going up even more because it's pretty much hit its floor in my opinion, but I just don't have the money to buy that much of it. But you know, I'm, I'm also one the same type of person like Tony. I'll buy a couple boxes here or there. Just, I'm like, Oh, ammo's on sale. It's cheap. Not, you know, and I'll go buy some, like I need to buy some more 30 super carry and it's still 15 bucks a box. I'm like, that's not a bad price for that. ammo, so. Especially because it's a new ammo. And mm-hmm. if you're one of those guys that shoot 40, Hey, it's still there, fellas, and it's not going up. I'm just saying, it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, 40's dead. <laughs> 40's dead till the ammo crunch, and then there's 40s <laughs> left on the shelves. That's that's exactly right. <laughs> oh, and dude, have we seen the prices on uh, Aim Surplus has has oh man has HKs on sale because they got factory blems and they got a crap load of them, and now. What happened is those HKs have hit the market, and now the Glocks are under two hundred dollars for those Gen three and Gen four Glock twenty twos and twenty threes. Yeah. <laughs> two ninety nine. Uh, I'm like, that's a barrel swap. That's two barrel swaps, and you have three calibers for one pistol. Yeah, you can go to three fifty seven Sig or nine millimeter. Just saying, there's ways to make sure you have a few firearms. Again, for the exact same reason I told you, and oh God forbid you ever have to use your main firearm in a defensive scenario, to police have that one. <laughs> so to have some guns you got on sale that actually work and dependable and look, law enforcement nobody in law enforcement is shooting out a Glock. All right. <laughs> they carry that thing on their hip, and that's all it is. That's so that, that, that's that's to... not true, Tony. We both probably know people who are in law enforcement that have put tons and tons and tons of rounds through their duty pistol. Yeah, maybe one or two. Yeah, yeah. But... His name is John, and <laughs> and the other guy's name is Larry. No, but I mean, <laughs> so I mean, I'm like, we're in that spot right now, and I and why do we keep saying it? Because all of us are gun guys. All of us are gun guys, and we're telling you right now, if you're not. If you're financially capable of setting yourself up, even if if it's a little bit of a hardship, but you only have one gun, think your way through this because this is a time. We're, we're, we're flatlining. We're at the bottom of that dip right now, and this is a time to get something before things go sideways. We do it because we care, not because we get it. I'm not – we don't get anything from AIM Surplus as far as no. I know or any of the <laughs> nope. other things. Nope. But my thing is get in to help yourself and help your family because really we, we – we, we, we're just a freedom dudes. We believe in freedom and we believe in the ability for you to defend yourself, your family. And we like guns. There's no shame there. So yeah, come to diversity shoot, check out diversity shoot.com. Uh, we have all the dates on it. If you want to donate, that'll be great. 
um, because we're going into the new year and I got to get to Vegas. Daddy got to get to Vegas, baby, so I can hang out with these losers. Yeah, we already got your room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And hopefully I can get my sleep apnea machine fixed so it doesn't sound like there's battling chainsaws in there between the three of us. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Surprised the cops didn't get called for people are running chainsaws. In no, there. Like what kind of drag racing is going on in that development? Street racers. Well, they, well, the Airbnb rented it to us again. So same one. So <laughs> he's like, I have no idea oh. what's wrong with the frequency. I look at the cameras our, and they're vibrating. Our, our, our friend Aaron is at SEMA show right now in Vegas. So I, Oh really? Yeah. So I, I sent him a text, something about, Make sure and don't give banana stickers out or banana <laughs> patches out. <laughs> oh God, I just so want to talk about. Did we talk about it? Yeah, we do. We've we'll, talked we'll talk about, about it. When, yeah, we talked about it when he did it. So, yeah, I'm giving out banana stickers. Hey, guy, you want a sticker I was <laughs> or like, a patch oh, or whatever it was? <laughs> yeah, it was a patch. Yeah, it was yeah. a banana patch, an AK banana patch, and he's giving it to the random black dude. So I'm like, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, hey, hey whatever. Bella? Yeah, I think hey, I, exactly. <laughs> Aaron's too nice of a guy. So you can send really us really a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So send us questions, comments, or feedback. In the show. I've got to go to sleep. Yeah. To gun gear review at gmail.com. Uh, so please subscribe and leave us a review somewhere. You can check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.net. Don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. I got a few reviews I'm just about done with, so you can there'll be new ones up over there. You can check us out on Facebook. For some reason, I haven't changed the show notes to X yet. It still says Twitter and Instagram at Firearms Insider. Don't forget to check out all our great sponsors. Please join us next week for the 500th episode 10-year celebration. Yes, the podcast has been going for 10 years. And it will be 500 episodes. And, of course, none of us here can say we've been on all 500 episodes. But, hey, we're, you know, we're in there. So, of course, thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound pound podcast on the network. And we are out. Epstein didn't kill himself. So.